What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are talking about shotguns at close range. Today's video idea was actually inspired by the Alex Murdaugh trial. I've been watching it for the last few weeks and boy is it juicy. Either way, they were discussing his son Paul who unfortunately had suffered deletion of his head via 12 gauge shotgun. A contact shotgun blast as a matter of fact. And as you can imagine, it was messy, and I'll just leave it at that. And we've all seen this type of stuff in movies as well. It's not just real life court cases, but it really got me thinking about how messy a contact gunshot would be. And we will try this with other firearms, but today I wanted to start with the 12 gauge shotgun quite possibly the messiest of them all. Now, if you don't know, a contact gunshot happens when the barrel is touching the target it's being fired into. We'll use my tire as an example. So when you shoot something like this with the muzzle pressed into it, not only are the projectiles causing damage, it's also the pressure and the gases that build up inside the barrel because they have nowhere else to go but into the target. And from what I've heard, contact gunshots are typically a lot more dramatic than a shot from even one or two feet away. All right, before we do our experiment, I wanna show you all what a regular shotgun blast looks like when it's not in contact with a target. The gun we're using is the Benelli Supernova 12 gauge shotgun, and we're shooting double op buckshot. This is actually my very first gun I ever bought as an adult. Fun fact. Pay attention to the muzzle and the gases that come out of it. We'll go ahead and shoot that clay pot. So you could probably see there's not a huge muzzle blast there, but what gases it does have come straight out the end of the barrel and dissipate very quickly because it takes the path of least resistance. But if the barrel is pressed into something, it has nowhere else to go. And that's what makes contact gunshots so unique. Hey guys, before we go any further, I wanna take just a minute to tell you all about Acre Gold, who is our sponsor for today's video. So you might know that the price of gold has been all over the place lately, and Acre Gold allows you to subscribe to gold bars for as little as $30 a month. The way this works is you pay a little bit each month, and once your stash reaches the price of one of their gold bars, then they ship it very discreetly right to your front door. Acre designs their gold in California and sources their gold from the largest mints in Switzerland. And a lot of people are saying that gold is one of the few tangible things that will be worth anything in the next five years. So if you want to acquire meaningful gold over time without coming out of pocket all at once, visit getacregold.com slash one shot TV and start investing in physical gold today. Again, that's getacregold.com slash one shot TV. And thank you to Acre Gold for supporting the channel. And here is our little confined space that I very crudely put together in about 30 minutes. It is eight feet long, a little less than six foot tall, and about five feet wide. So basically the size of a shed. Worst case scenario, if you're dealing with a close range gunshot. You can see how I built this thing. I just ran two by fours off the railroad tie wall and then used these white foam insulation panels to line the inside of it. I am gonna put another wall right here along the front so that it is completely surrounded. And of course, our testing subject for today's video is gonna be a Ballistic Dummy Lab human head. Now this is slightly different than a real head because it's not real and there's no arteries or blood pumping throughout. It just has several fluid sacs on the inside of the skull, but it should show the results pretty dang realistic. Now initially I was not gonna pull the trigger on this since it is a contact shot. I was gonna use a gun sled or something like that, but I got to thinking I could just put another panel up right here, cut a little hole in it and stick our gun barrel through that, which should protect me from shrapnel. I'm not really worried about the buckshot as much as I am the high velocity bone fragments coming off that head, so. It might not be the smartest thing I've done, but we'll try it. All right, since this is a science experiment, I will be wearing a lab coat for today's demonstration. And I realized while I was putting the fourth wall up that if I completely enclose this thing, it's gonna be really dark in there and the cameras will look like trash. I did not think of that before. So I'm gonna leave this spot open and then we put a fourth wall on half of this side. We've got our little glory hole cut right there and it lines up perfectly with our human head on the other side, so. Let's start the show. And for this one, we are gonna use the 12 pellet three inch double op buckshot going 1300 feet per second. I honestly considered using birdshot for this because I don't know which one would be more impressive. It's not like it is at 10 or 15 yards, but I still think the buckshot is probably the right choice. We've got our splatter shield safety goggles on. How messy is a contact shotgun blast? Let's find out. Cue the glory hole comments as I'm doing this. Hasta la vista. 
Baby. Yeah, that proved the point. <laughs> God. All right, it looks like our head is getting ready to fall apart, so I wanted to show you guys this before the face comes off. You can see that it is still perfectly intact in the front. It's just the back and the top that is completely gone. It's like a canoe back there. But the reason I wanted to point that out is because in the Alex Murdoch trial, the prosecution was arguing that if it was a contact shotgun wound, the face would not be intact like it was. This is exactly how Paul Murdoch was found. I know that's kind of graphic and gnarly to think about, which is why I chose green fluid over red, but we just proved that it is absolutely possible for the face to stay intact. And before we go into the shed, I wanna show you all the shotgun that was used. So there is, you know, Know, bone fragments and green fluid all over the barrel as well as inside the barrel and even though I just poked that barrel through a hole I'm still splattered with green fluid my goggles as well it just kind of shows you the velocity that that stuff is coming out of there it managed to sneak through a you know centimeter gap but let's take a look inside of our structure so this <laughs> is even more dramatic than I expected it to be. The majority of it is on the ceiling right above where the head was at, but it's really just all over the place. It looks a lot greener in person, and even all the way back here, we've got some fluid. Obviously some bone fragments down there on the ground, and then pieces of that head all over the place. It looks like this is the majority of the brain. So I assume it just ejected upward, bounced off the ceiling, and landed on the ground right there. And if you look closely, it is not just fluid that splattered onto the walls, it is also ballistic shell. And we have some pretty big chunks all throughout this entire thing. And right where the barrel of the shotgun was touching the ballistic shell, you can see the severe burns, I think stippling is what they call it. And there's obviously nothing left on the top of this head. Okay, I just noticed that there is a huge piece of that ballistic dummy head on the outside of our structure. I assume it ejected from one of those holes in the top, but I didn't notice that before. Wow. All right, guys, that is all I got for you today on contact shotgun blasts. Wow, that was very impressive. I thought it would be dramatic, but that was even more ridiculous than I was expecting. Holy crap. And this reminds me of another moment in the trial where the defense's expert was on the stand discussing how explosive these types of shots can be. And the prosecutor, in a very condescending way, tried to mock him by saying, so you're telling me a contact shotgun wound is like a bomb going off? And he said, yeah, actually, that's exactly what it's like. I think he was right. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, I'd be glad to hear from you guys. If you liked the video, please hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.